This is Loopline, and in this video I want to cover the custom data grabber that Scrapebox 2.0 has implemented. So if you go to grab check here, you can go to custom data grabber, and basically what this is is it's totally customizable, and you can set it up to grab any amount of or any kind of data off of any page. Um, you build different modules when you scroll over here this is where you build them and then down here they show up. So we're gonna look at YouTube view checker today. I built this module just to check the YouTube views so that you can view the count. So if for instance if we were gonna go ahead and just open up I'll just open up this video here and grab it and we can see that this particular video happens to have um, only 180 views and then other videos have a lot more so this particular module that we're going to build in this video will go through and it will get the number of views that YouTube videos that we load have. So if we go back to our data grabber here we can go in and have a look at what's already built and when you get to this screen you have the editor and in this section you build the actual module as far as what's going to show up in the window when it is checking these things and then once that is built you actually have to edit the module masks so that you can tell it, okay, now that we've built the module, what do we want to look for? And you can have multiple masks in here, and so it can look for multiple things. So you could do, for instance, if you had a directory of dentists, say you are working with dentists, and you have a directory of dentists, and it has the dentist name, um, maybe the dentist business name, and then the actual licensed dentist name, and then maybe their address, and then a phone number, maybe a fax number, and an email address. And let's say you wanted to capture that information, assuming that it is in a consistent format throughout the directory, you could build a module that would go through and you could set up the module here and call it, you know, dentist scraper, or whatever. And then in the mask section, you could go through and add a mask for like the name and then the email address and then the actual address. And you might be able to get more than one piece of information in one mask. But depending on how the inside is formatted, you may need multiple masks to pull all that information. And then, um, of course, you can save that information with the URL it came from as well. So when you export it, it's there. So let's look at the YouTube view check. So first we got to give it a menu entry name. Pretty easy. I called it YouTube View Checker. Name the folder which will be stored and grabbed. No path, just the name. So you don't have to put in like where you want it to be stored on the drive. It's going to be stored in the custom data grabber folder that is in your actual Scrapebox folder. So if we go and look here, um, the grabbed data here will be under the YouTube view. So you're going to have your folder for Scrapebox and then your grab data folder and then under that is the actual folder where that data will be grabbed and stored. So the column header text, I'll show you where this is in just a minute. I'm going to call it number of items found. It's important to note this is a it will show up here as a count of the number of items found. So let's say I have dentist business name um, the licensed dentist, the address, phone number, fax, and an email address. And I made a mask for each of those. That would be six different pieces of information. It would show six found here. And then to say you had five groups of those six pieces of information on the page, you might have 30 items found. So this is a count of the number of items found or maybe none if there's none. And then the text for the tray icon, so when the grabber is finished it pops up in the Windows tray saying it's done and I put done checking YouTube views. Number of connections 1, timeout 30. Um, you can use proxies with this or not. I'm not going to use proxies for this video but um, you could run the connections up and then the, the timeout you can adjust if it happens to be a slow side that sort of thing. Um, you can create new modules, save this as a new module which will push it over here and then update the selected module if you wanted to so let's just hit update didn't really change anything there and then we can close out but before we need to close out we need to now edit this module and tell it what we're looking for. So here we have the name of the mask pretty easy that's just the friendly name up here examples of expected data optional but should be set I just picked a random number here um, so that it knows it's looking for a number and then regex to extract data or before or after format like this. So this will fully support regex. Now in this video I'm not going to cover regex. Regex is pretty easy. If you know it you can just go to town here. If you don't know regex one option you have is to learn regex. Pretty easy. Another option to have is to just go to Google and search for like a regex library and you will find a very large list 
of, for instance, this regular expression library, regexlib.com, uh, is a great one. There's others here too. And you could also look for a particular regex here. Like if I wanted to do a phone number regex, I just type phone number regex. And it will come up with all sorts of different things So that are already made. So these are different based off the different format. And it'll tell you what matches, what non-matches. It'll tell you what the expression is and that sort of thing. And so you could probably copy and paste some here. Um, you can go probably to Google and type in regex for phone numbers or regex for an address or regex for whatever. So you can probably figure it out and do some copying and pasting there. Worst case, you could go to a forum and say, I'm, I'm kind of working with this, but I don't really understand. Um, most people on forums are pretty helpful if you're just kind and just asking for help there. Um, but you also have another option if it doesn't require a regex. I'll just go back here to one of the YouTube videos we were looking at here and open that up. Um, and let's look at the actual HTML of the page. And we can see here, I'm going to look for, it has 181 views. So I'm just going to search the HTML for 181 here to start with. And that'll get us right in the ballpark. Here we have, um, we can see it says view count, uh, 181. And then sometimes there's more than one copies of what you're looking for in the actual HTML code. So in this case there is, there's item, data, content, 181, interaction count, um, and then there is the actual as well, a div with a watch view count, 181 views, and then let's see if there's another. And it looks like, no, that's just part of something else. Um, and that's just part of random numbers. So there are several ways that we could do this. And the way that Scrapebox is set up here, if we go to grab check custom data grabber, again, this assumes that you have some basic understanding of at least HTML knowledge. If you don't understand what we're looking at here in HTML, then you're probably going to want to go back and do some basic research on HTML or be able to kind of hack through what you're looking at. Or again, if you only need to do one, maybe post this on a forum. But um, assuming that you have some basic knowledge, we can go back into our mask editing here and we can see that if we don't want to use regex, we also have the option to do a before and after. And the format is like this, before underscore after equals and then the before content and the after content. So I haven't done that here because that's simpler for those people who don't want to deal with regex because if you know regex, I'm sure you know HTML and we're good to go. So, um, so let's take the simpler route in the video, which is before, after equals, this part has to be there. See, it's in the format before, after. So you put that part in and then after the equal sign here, which is just like this, comes the before data and then the pipe key and the after data. So before data, I chose the interaction count here as the before data, at actually interaction count content equals and then question or uh, quotation mark. So here we can go over here and look and we'll just search it here in the page and we can see here this is the one the meta item prop uh, interaction count content equals and then so this is the before so we're, if we're looking at this I just picked this right here as before data and then after data is just going to be uh, something like this. So let's go back in here and I like I did that here which is the quotation mark there. So what's in between there between those two things is going to be your count. I could have done this with other elements in the page um, but I just picked one and went with it. So if that makes sense so this is the before of what we want to grab. We're setting markers so we're picking that as a before marker and this is the after marker and then we put in the before underscore after equals then we put in our before part and then the pipe key, which is like the key on most keyboards above the inner key, at least in the US. Um, and so we just hit shift and hit that to get the pipe key and then the after marker. And then we save this, the extraction we can put in must contain or must not contain. Um, I don't need it for this particular thing, but if you're having trouble isolating something, you can put in a must contain value or a must not contain value or we'll leave it blank to ignore. And so let's save that. Uh, we'll update selected mask and close. Again, if I wanted to add more than one mask, I can. So we've built the module, we've built the mask. Let's close out of this and let's actually go in here and then we go to grab custom data grabber and we just click on the module and it will run it for this. Now, this is where we built the module. See, we have the URL. Remember when I put the number of items found in there and then of course status, we have the show data folder, which is that folder where everything's gonna be saved, pretty handy. And then we have configure masks, where we can also just go in and look at the mask we're working with and 
this is a quick way to get in and edit and mess around when you're troubleshooting that sort of thing without having to go back in with several clicks to get out of this window and go back to the other etc uh, but that's all good so we're going to leave that and then we have the option to save the urls with extracted data um, that's also set up in the mask itself by default remember here we have it um, down here to save URLs with the data. So if I have this turned off, for instance, but in one particular run, I want to turn it on without having to go back here and edit my whole module, that's where this comes in handy under the actual window here. And that's really handy for me. Uh, I would assume most people will want that so you know I'm going to get a view count, otherwise I'm going to get a list of view numbers, and I don't really know what video that goes with. So we're going to save that. I'm going to hit start and it's going to go through here and read number of items found um, so in this video it was not able to find that particular element um, and let's just run it again just in case um, so in this video it didn't count that so perhaps YouTube is blocking me on those statuses although it says completed but um, obviously it worked just a minute ago so let's have a look here at what that data actually looks like and we will see that for this video it had 407 views, 674, 1102. So let's just grab this one here and we'll load it in our browser and go look at it. And it was the uh, 1102 one and we can see it has 1102 views. And so that is how you can use the custom data grabber to grab data. Again, you can see there I've messed around with YouTube a bunch before we got to this video, so they probably aren't liking my uh, a lot of hammering with my IP. So I would recommend that you use proxies if you're going to be hammering on one particular site. Also, be aware that um, if you're using a random site and you set connections on this thing to like a hundred connections and you're using you know a site that might happen to be on a five dollar hosting account if you connect to the hundred connections even if you're using a hundred different proxies that could take down the site uh, and then you're not going to get the data you want so be mindful that the insight has to be able to bear the load that you throw at it um, as well as if you were to try to use 100 connections without proxies then you're going to get your IP blocked potentially by the insight and you know then you won't be able to do it as well so set your connections and find the sweet spot where you can get as fast as you want or as fast as you're able to without taking down the inside or getting your IP blocked or that sort of thing but that is how the custom data grabber works and that's how you can build a module and that's how you can build a mask and then of course I'm not gonna really go into regex in this video to try to teach it or anything there's loads of tutorials out there but you can use regex as well and you can grab anything that you want. The other fantastic thing about this is that now if I go in here to my Scrapebox folder and go to configuration folder here, I have this. It saves the module itself here is I've got YouTube view checker dot SB grabber module, whatever the extension is there. So you can take this particular file now and go dump it in any other Scrapebox folder that you want. So I can copy this and I can go and just dump it in this folder here under my configuration folder. And now if I were to load up that instance of Scrapebox as well, it will just automatically pick that module up. So if you build a module in one, you can quickly copy it just by copying that file. And this particular YouTube views, I will upload to the website and I'll put the link down in the comments in case the um, this is particularly beneficial to anyone then you can go ahead and do that but here if we go to uh, I don't have an updated version enough to have the data grabber and so if I wanted to go here to this new module and I just had to update there so I pause the video there it is YouTube view checker in the new module just by dropping that file in and again I'll stick the link to this file if you want to download it if it's helpful in the video comments down below and then I might stick other ones uploaded at that same link as well if I make them over time. So feel free to check out that link and any modules that I've made that I feel might be beneficial. I will just upload them and you can just download them and drop them in the configuration folder of your Scrapebox unit or Scrapebox folder rather. And then you'll have them right away. If you build any modules that you'd like to share, email them to me or contact me and get them to me. And I will upload them for everyone else as well. And that is how you can use the custom data grabber in Scrapebox to grab any data from any website that you would like to harvest. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button on your screen or click the subscribe button down below.